Okay, moving on with our renderers, which uh, now are all 3D data renderers. We've already covered the 2D data renderers, and the next one, uh, after the slice renderer, is the isosurface renderer. The isosurface is analogous to a contour in that every point on the surface represents one data value in the volume. So a contour renderer draws a line, and every point on that line has a single value in your, uh, your data volume. An isosurface is like a three-dimensional contour. Every point on the surface has a single data value. So jumping right in, once again, I will launch Vapor from my command line, uh, pointing at my Vapor executable, and then passing off data to it. Again, most users will click on an icon that they put somewhere on their desktop. But alternatively, command line is a valid option too. So here is my GUI. Um, I've noticed in some of my recordings, actually all my recordings, that my screen capture tool is not capturing my menu bar up here at the top. So uh, what you guys can't see uh, until you spin Vapor up yourself is that the top menu contains um, a Vapor menu, a file menu where you load your data, an edit menu where you have your undo and redo options, some extra tools I'll cover in other videos, um, image capturing where you can take snapshots and animations of your video which will be another tutorial and then a help menu so I, I know you I just realized you guys can't see that but um, if you are loading data manually through a desktop icon like like down here you'll click on file open VDC close VDC or import your data flavor of your choosing okay on to ISO surfaces. First thing we do, create a new image renderer just to give us context on where we are. Turn it on, go to region, and then expand our box. And if this is too fast, there is a link to the image renderer tutorial down below that will walk through everything, walk through everything I just did. Go back to navigate to turn off my red boxes, and now create a new ISO surface renderer right there. Double click that, and then we'll just turn it right on, and immediately we have a surface of cloud fraction, CLD FRA. And um, what we're looking at here is uh, more, is better explained through the appearance tab where we have our uh, ISO surface histogram. So basically this is a, a histogram of cloud fraction that we're seeing. And this little control point down here lets us pick what ISO value is being used to generate our ISO surface. So I can drag this left and right and you can see my data value down here will change as I modify this slider. We can also go down here and type explicit data values. So if we're looking for the cloud fraction of 0.75, we can type that explicitly, and um, we have an ISO surface of it. We can also double click on our histogram and create new ISO surfaces. Now, this gets tricky because, you, as you can see, we're really occluding um, the ISO surfaces that we already have. Right now we have four, but it's really hard to tell that there's four ISO surfaces here. So there's a few tricks we can do to change that. Um, right now I have two ISO surfaces. One is at 0.75 and the other is at about 0.12. To distinguish between these two things, what I can do is um, there's this checkbox that says color by a second variable. And if I go back to my variables tab, there's this color mapped variable down here. Right now it's at cloud fraction. I can apply the cloud fraction uh, value of the variable to a new histogram. Here, it doesn't make sense if I just click on it. I'll click on color by a second variable, and here now we have a new transfer function of uh, for cloud fraction that uh, is being applied to our ISO surfaces. So you can see we're having an ISO surface of cloud fraction, and we're coloring it by cloud fraction. So this surface right here at about 0.12 it's getting applied a value of dark blue. This one is, uh, you know, kind of pinkish. You can also apply transparency, kind of like you do with other uh, renderers as well, to get uh, your desired effect. It's really something you you have to play with to uh, show the observables you're you're trying to uh, demonstrate. You can also go back to the variables tab and pick a separate variable to color your uh, ISO surfaces with. So my ISO surfaces are being colored by cloud fraction. I can color them by, you know, anything. I'll, let's try temperature. And now we can see the ISO surfaces, uh, both of them, at 0.75 and 0.12 are being colored by the temperature histogram down here. And, you know, as
as usual. I can take these color control points, modify the color, make them opaque at certain temperature values, um, and uh, modify the ISO values independently. Yeah, let's bring this back up. Okay, and let's get rid of one of these ISO services. It's, it's too busy. One of the things you're, you'll want to do uh, is try to strike a balance between communicating your science, but also not cluttering your visualization. Uh, you want to illuminate what's important without you know, showing too much. Um, one more thing that you can do that's kind of, I find kind of neat with ISO surfaces. So if I go to my region manipulators, I can right click on these boxes and kind of slice through an ISO surface so you can get a peek on what's going on inside. So right here, we're kind of slicing through the ISO surface. And now we can kind of see what's happening inside the eye wall. And I'm not sure what kind of science lies <laughs> in this, but um, I don't know. There might be something there. I find it kind of interesting. Moving on, um, ISO surfaces have ray tracing parameters and lighting parameters. I don't think you guys will need to worry about most of this. With ray tracing parameters, um, the ISO surface and volume rendering ray casters have two rendering algorithms uh, that operate on regular grids and curvilinear grids. All terrain following grids, uh, such as those for WERF, are curvilinear grids, and so those will default to the curvilinear algorithm. Um, which is supported with discrete graphics cards, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, but some Intel cards have trouble with this. And so if you have an Intel card, we're going to default you to the regular grid renderer, I believe, and you'll have to switch to the curvilinear grid and see if that works. Um, the regular grid is somewhat accurate, but it's not, it's not perfectly true uh, as opposed to the curvilinear grid. Sampling rate multiplier, something you, probably, you guys probably won't have to touch. Um, I don't think it has a discernible impact on the rendering for many data sets. So um, it's similar to the, to the quality slider in the slice renderer. I don't think you guys have to worry about it. And then there's lighting parameters. Again, um, if you guys are into computer graphics, you might know what these things kind of do. But I think the default values are good for most uh, purposes. You're just going to want to stick with the defaults with lighting parameters. Geometry is the same story as with the other renderers. Uh, you manipulate the region of uh, interest or of what's being drawn, uh, copy regions from other renderers, and uh, scene transforms, and finally the annotation just throws in a color bar. So I think that's a quick sprint through the ISO surface renderer. Next I will be moving through the volume renderer.